got some veterans on that. We use our chat function to ask questions. And so if you have a question of me or of Congressman Bud, uh, please do put that in the chat function as we as we move through this call. We will uh, we will ask those questions at, at the end. I'll, I'll get some things rolling here in a little bit. Um, but again, thank you for joining us. Uh, those of you all who are new to these calls, you can find all of these calls that we've been doing archived on our website. We're at greensboro.org backslash COVID-19. There's no hyphen in COVID-19. It's just backslash COVID-19. Um, it, we've been sending out regular emails with all of the important content in these calls summarized in those emails. Again, links to the information that is critical for you and for your business. Um, and so if you're a member of the chamber, be on the lookout for those emails as well. Um, an announcement that we make and we will continue to make because I keep seeing, uh, unfortunately, the state of North Carolina falling behind others. And Congressman, I think you'd agree we need folks to be filling out their census forms. Um, I know that uh, it's very, very important to us uh, as a state, obviously for congressional representation, but also for federal uh, funding and programs that come down the pike. Uh, and especially after uh, this pandemic, it'll be more important than ever. So please do um, fill out those forms. Uh, uh, you can do it online very, very easily. Uh, we'll put the link in the chat so that you can do that. Today, we're, uh, we're thrilled to be joined by uh, Congressman Ted Budd, who represents uh, North Carolina's 13th Congressional District. He's serving his second term now in the 116th United States Congress. He brings an outsider's perspective to Washington, having, having never held an elective office before this. Uh, when opportunity presented itself after redistricting opened up uh, North Carolina's 13th District, Ted decided to run and offered to bring a different perspective to our nation's capital. He sits on the Financial Services Committee, where he uses his real-world experience to roll back the restrictive regulations that strangle job creation in the country. Uh, working at a young age for his family's janitorial and landscaping business, Ted learned the importance of work ethic and common sense decision making. He and his wife, Amy Kate, have three children. They live in Davie County. Uh, he's a strong Christian family man. Uh, he holds an MBA from Wake Forest University and a master's in leadership from uh, the Dallas Theological Seminary. Congressman Bud, thank you uh, for joining us this afternoon and taking a few moments out of what I know is a very busy schedule. Brent, thanks for having me. It's an uh, honor to be on here. I was, I'm in my advance office right now. We, of course, we have our Guilford County office. I was just over in, uh, in Greensboro a few minutes ago, but um, great to be online with you all. Look forward to the discussion and um, thank, you, thank you again. Well, I appreciate you being on. Let's let's go ahead and get started, and we'll start at kind of the the thirty thousand foot view. What what has Congress done at, uh, uh, up to up to this point to fight uh, COVID nineteen? Give us a give us kind of an over a bird's eye view of everything that's gone on in Congress to date to to fight this pandemic. Absolutely. So there's some you know known legislation that we're all not all of us, but a lot of us are beneficiaries of right now in these different phases. 3 and 3.5, but I'm going to go all the way back to when uh, we started seeing this. There was a call from the Senate, uh, Senator Ted Cruz, Senator Tom Cotton, to shut down travel from China when we started detecting this. Uh, those were the first two in the Senate. I was the first one in the U.S. House to call for a shutdown from China to get a hold on this, which we want to preserve good relationships with them as, as far as we can. Uh, but at the same time, we, we had to deal with the travel early on. So uh, that was in January, I believe, when we uh, when I called for the shutdown. Of course, the administration followed through and they did. And uh, but then we go to the phase one was the very first bill that we did. And that is an eight point three billion dollar package. And that was uh, more medical supplies like masks. So they got that started. Then there was the CARES Act, uh, which is the phase three, and that's $350 billion for small business loans, help companies, uh, small businesses meet payroll and pay rent, uh, cover a little bit of, 25% uh, of their receipt can go to uh, things other than payroll, uh, such as overhead. And that eventually becomes a grant. I mean, if it's, if it's applied as, uh, as indicated, then they can use that as a grant. I know some folks on the call today probably are recipients of that. I had some 
good calls yesterday with some folks in Greensboro and uh, in Guilford County that were recipients of this and, uh, you know, trying to be good stewards of that and make sure it's placed uh, appropriately in their company. Uh, we've delayed tax filing. I mean, when have we ever looked, not at April 15th, a couple of weeks ago, but when have we looked at July 15th as being our tax deadline? I think that's going to be helpful to a lot of people. Uh, Penalty-free retirement account access. We don't want people selling at a low. We want them, they've invested all their lives. We don't want them to have to take these required minimum distributions at a low point in the market. Um, we cut uh, a lot of red tape at the FDA to allow quickly uh, approving new medications and new treatments. Uh, we have increased access to telehealth services. Uh, we've rushed resources to hospitals, to doctors and other frontline providers and giving them a surge in funding. Um, yeah, we've expanded health care and health savings access. Uh, allow people can purchase over-the-counter medicines as needed uh, through their HSAs. And then that was just phase three, phase 3.5, which is uh, drove up there last week for this. And that is the replenishing of the Paycheck Protection Program. It was so successful, uh, and there's a lot of discretion on the part of Secretary Mnuchin. Uh, and look, immediately when we saw this thing was going to run out, uh, we started working to uh, just let, hey, let's not play politics with this thing. Let's go ahead and get this thing restocked. Let's put in another 300 billion or so. Um, but there was a 10 day delay because of very unfortunate politics. But now we've got, um, we put another $320 billion in there for the PPP, um, $60 billion for small business disaster loans, $75 billion in new hospital funds, and then $25 billion more, more for virus testing. Um, so there's, those are just a few of the things that we've done uh, in the past, I would say, two months, six weeks to two months. Um, quite a mouthful, but uh, there it is, Brent. Thank you. Yeah, it's been it's been a long uh, six weeks to two months, hasn't it? Uh, there's an awful lot that has happened. Um, you know, we're uh, starting us off emergency. April shortest, shortest month on history in history. But I was like, you know, it actually only has 30 days, but it, it felt like about 60 days in April uh, because it of sure everything did. that we have. So I, I get what you're saying. It sure did. It sure did. It, you know, it, it almost felt like hour by hour things were changing uh, on you and. Uh, you just had to you just had to analyze and react <laughs> on a regular basis. Um, and I will That's tell right. you, I, 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 I'll get a little a little bit of dig in here. Some some of us organizations, and I just got off the phone with Zach Matheny uh, with Downtown Greensboro, who says well, just before this call, we were commiserating over the fact that 501c6s are not eligible for uh, paycheck protection programs. So hopefully, maybe down the line, we will figure out some way to to help us uh, through this as well. Where uh, We've been busy helping our businesses uh, get all the information they needed on uh, PPP, and we're glad that they're that they're getting those. But but, uh, but uh, we we feel a little left out. So maybe one of these days we'll get in on it. Um, but well, put that in the back of your mind. I was going to mention that this at the end of the call, but uh, we have. I know that Senator Burr and Senator Tillis have uh, signed on to a letter asking that. Uh, uh, you know, from the Senate asking that C6s be included, which includes the chamber and downtown That's Greensboro, correct. of course. That's right. Correct. But I have, That's right. I'm, I'm working with other congressmen from North Carolina to draft a letter to the chairman uh, of, the, of the Treasury, Secretary of the Treasury as well, to ask that C6s be included. So we Thank are you. in full support Thank of that. And uh, we are working with Secretary Mnuchin on it as we speak. So uh, that awesome. is in process. I just, uh, I was saving the good news for later, but since you mentioned it, there you go. There you go. I I have to strike when the iron is hot. You know how that goes. I have to I have to do that. Let, let's stay on on PPP because uh, you know we've been reading in the in the in the press about uh, a lot of larger nationally recognized businesses receiving those uh, loans. What is what is your reaction to that and to the way the program has been executed over the past uh, few weeks? You know, mostly good. Uh, of course, there's been some sensational, unfortunate um, things that have, so you, you hear about the uh, uh, the bigger companies. You hear about the Ruth's Chris and the Shake Shacks, and of course the LA Lakers. But uh, look, those are those are exceptions, but not the rule. And those are being dealt with. There's a 
uh, according to the treasurer, uh, Secretary Mnuchin, they have, he has tightened down to uh, prevent a lot of those people that didn't need this money from getting the money. Um, so I think it's been executed in the second half even better than it did in the first one. Um, and look, this is un absolutely unprecedented what we're facing right now. Uh, they literally were assembling uh, the airplane and putting the wings on as it was rolling down the runway. Uh, I'm glad there's not more bad examples, but um, we're plugging loopholes. Um, we're going to review all loans over two million dollars. And uh, one of the one of the good things is, according to the SBA report on the first round of the PPP, 74% of the loans were below $150,000, and that really is a you, you back into that. That really is an indicator of the size of the payrolls that they're supporting, and that is our small businesses that are vital to our economy. You know, most jobs are in small. So that goes right where it's needed. Uh, it's not to the LA Lakers. It's not to Roos Chris. Um, and I, I just think this is a great example of what it was really intended to do. Um, and 74% of the loans are going exactly where they need to. Well, the other ones are working well, uh, the other 26%, but I would say it's a great example of what it was fully intended to do, and that's keep these businesses intact so we can restart our economy. Well, yes, keep keep those businesses intact and, and keep those employees working. Um, you know, I mean, keep keep them on payrolls and keep them doing what they need to do to, to get us back on, on strong footing, right? Yeah, that's 1.2 million businesses, small businesses that were right. able to keep their employees on the payroll that otherwise would not have been able to do so. And again, the, the rollout wasn't perfect. Um, you know, and I'm interested in working with my colleagues in Congress to address the issues where, you know, the federal response has fallen short. Maybe there's some of those on the call and of course our office. I'm going to go ahead and mention it now. I'll mention it later. Our our number is 336-998-1313. Um, you can also find me on the web at bud.house.gov. Bud, two D's on bud, bud.house.gov. And uh, you can message it there as well. But look, we want to be engaged and helpful. Um, you know, one of the things with PP, I never thought being in Congress, I would be in tech support. Uh, but I'm mean, Sunday night, <laughs> a few weeks ago, I was helping a bank unlock unlock $800 million of loans to small businesses um, because they couldn't get their two-factor authentication done. And so I, I'm working with uh, I'm wow. working with the liaison office to get two-factor authentication done at you know midnight at Sunday night a couple of weeks ago. That was, but what the good part of that is, first of all, I think all of us in Congress are willing to do this work when we need to. Uh, and the other part is that $800 million that went right here into the economy to uh, keep these businesses afloat. That's, uh, that's awesome. We're, we appreciate that. And, and of course, you know, I mean, in, in times of emergency, um, you're not going to achieve perfection. Um, you know, there, there are a lot of times where you can't let perfect get in the way of good, uh, especially at a time when, when these funds are needed uh, so badly. Um, in the small business community, you just got to get the funds out the out the door as quickly as possible. So, uh, I think I think there's some understanding that that there's going to be some there's going to be some imperfections in the system. That's for sure. That's for sure. Let's talk about well, healthcare access. Go ahead. Go ahead. When it, yeah, I was, no, I was going to say less understanding when it's your business and it, it's time to meet payroll and it's it's hard to do it. But um, you know you understand. <laughs> It's easier to understand when it's the neighbor down the street, but when it's your own small business you're trying to keep intact, uh, it's harder. But um, I think the program's getting better. The real, the ultimate answer here is to reopen the economy uh, in a safe and a speedy way. I think you can do both, and you have to do both. You have to keep an eye on health and the economy at the same time. But we don't. The goal is not to keep funding the PPP, uh, the Paycheck Protection Program. I mean, we'll do it while we have to. But the goal is to let's re-strengthen our economy by getting it open as safely and as quickly as possible. And I always say those two things together. Gotcha. Great. So uh, what I meant to transition on to is, you know, we're in a, we're in a health care cr uh, crisis or a health, this is a health crisis uh, with the pandemic. Um, in the midst of this, are we learning um, lessons on how we can increase Healthcare access throughout the country. What are, what are we learning through this 
through this process that we can put to use on the other side. Yeah, one of the things I mentioned earlier was, um, you know, the increase in what we're seeing right now is in telehealth services. So that was something that uh, we funded. We cut a lot of red tape at the FDA. Uh, one of the bills that I uh, put forth was the Pandemic Healthcare Access Act. And that's where the American people should have as much healthcare flexibility as possible during the pandemic. Um, it temporarily decouples HSAs or health savings accounts from the high deductible plans. And it gives more Americans or allows more Americans to use HSAs for healthcare expenses during the coronavirus pandemic. So that's just one of the bills that I've, uh, I've uh, drafted during this uh, during this time. Um, you know, I think people really need a lot of uh, as much flexibility as they can during this pandemic. Um, I mentioned the pandemic healthcare access, of course, telehealth, um, huge. I mean, that's just been something we probably should have done before. I'm seeing great procedures. Um, I've seen it in Guilford County, Rowan, all the counties are there. People are waiting in their cars while they're sick and they're going in to see the doctor right when they need to rather than waiting in there and perhaps infecting other people or being infected by other people so i think there's a lot of smart things that are coming out of this very painful process but there's been a lot of good things that have come out of this um but uh i think that we're going to see a lot of innovation on the back end um and, and clean up a lot of things which we may have been slow to do as a country because we didn't have to And as part of that, Congressman, uh, you know, we're, there's been a lot of talk about us just not being prepared in terms of medical equipment and that sort of thing. Um, how do we solve that for the future, right? I mean, you know, we're all, we're all scrambling for masks and gowns and, and gosh, Clorox wipes for crying out loud. Um, how, do, how do we work that going forward as well? Yeah, I think supply chain has, has become a lot more intelligent. Look, if you look at the triad, we're one of the best places in the country for supply chain. Um, I mean, Greensboro, some of the best logistics and trucking companies are right there. Some of the best, what a huge textile history we have. I'm talking with, uh, with textile companies in Greensboro, um, over in Alamance, down in, um, in Davidson County. They are completely retooling their uh, their factories so that they can produce masks and gowns. So letting businesses do what they need to do and retool and having the assurance from the federal government that in pandemics, they're going to get paid, um, even though it's not these CEOs and these leaders first thought. Um, they just want to do the right thing. They're uh, they're converting their, their trucking lines rather than moving fabrics. They're moving uh, gowns and masks. So I've just seen a lot of heroes come out of this. I mean, everybody from our our grocery workers all the way up to um, leaders in industry that are really helping make, help us get what we need to get. We see things like the, the DPA and the Defense Production Act that's um, helping with food supply chain and also helping with uh, production of ventilators. We're also uh, seeing things that we thought we may have needed, but didn't. And we're finding that New York is very different than Greensboro. It's very different than other counties in my district. It's very different than Wake County. Um, so I think there's just been, uh, there's been a lot of learning here. Um, and we also have to look at the history of our stockpiles. A lot of this during, uh, the bird flu and the Zika virus were depleted and were never restocked. So we really need to do a in full investigation into, um, the history of our stockpiles, what was outdated and, um, and what was not replenished when it should have been. Uh, we did want to do one of the pandemic uh, in the 115th Congress, um, we, this, which is the Congress I came in on. We did a pandemic preparedness act. I don't have the language in front of me right now, but that was that was a really good act. We didn't know we would see anything as big as uh, as the coronavirus, um, but at the same time, we knew that there would in the future be a pandemic, and we did some preparation for that in uh, 2017, 2018. Um, and that's worth Googling or going to congress.gov and pulling up the, uh, the pandemic preparation uh, legislation from 2017. Sorry, I couldn't get myself off mute there. You think, you think after, all, after all these weeks, I'd, I'd, I'd learn how to take myself off mute on a, on a that was a uh, really, really good dramatic pause. 
that's a dramatic pause as, as, as everybody starts to uh, put into their browser the, the pandemic act and see what, see what we get out of it. Um, so, you know, we're all sitting here in, in, uh, in beautiful central North Carolina. Looks like it's going to be a, it's a, it's beautiful outside my window right now. Looks like it's going to be beautiful all weekend. Um, and I think everybody, what's, what's at the top of everybody's mind is, uh, you know, when should we reopen? Um, you have any insights for us as to when you think we ought to reopen the state, the country, the economy? Help us understand when we when we ought to be able to 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 get somewhat back to normal uh, here anytime soon. Yeah, great. That is really the question because that's the ultimate solution is getting reopened. Uh, I think we should begin to reopen the country as fast and as soon as possible, as long as we do it safely. Um, look, we can do this while we're still listening to the medical experts. Uh, the kind of the old statement is we can walk and chew gum. And I think that we need to do both. We need to listen to medical experts and open as fast as possible. We're realizing that New York State is not the same as North Carolina, is not the same as South Carolina or Florida or Oklahoma, or name it, pick your states. And nor, once you're looking inside the 100 counties in North Carolina, Rowan is different than Guilford, is different than Wake, is different than Davie County, where I live. So uh, I think we can begin uh, to open different counties in different places. Look, Yancey County has zero cases. I'm not talking about zero deaths. I'm talking about zero cases. And so there are, there are pockets of places in which you can go 100% open. Now, maintain the social distancing. Wear masks if you need. Use hand sanitizer. Uh, there are some social distancing things which are really good procedures. I think people are going to be more conscious conscious of their hygiene from here forth. That's really good. Um, but we don't need to continue to be on an inappropriate lockdown, which destroys people's futures. Um, so I think we should be very careful to do both. Um, May 8th is the date set at 5 p.m. is the date set in Executive Order 135, I believe, by the governor, or the latest executive order by the governor. So I would say May 8th is, is his date set for reopening. And he's gonna keep a close eye on this, but we need to go not just state by state, but even region by region and county by county. Um, we can flatten the curve. We've are, we're already seeing that the curve is flat as you look at the aggregate numbers across the country. But by and large, this is a free country. We were never meant to be locked down like this. And I would point people to my uh, article on uh, on Fox News. Uh, you can find it on the website. It was on there this morning. So, Congressman, la last question from me, and then we're going to open it up. Please, if you all have questions, uh, put them in the uh, put them in the chat function so we can continue this conversation. But my my last question is: You mentioned that you drove back to Washington. Um, Talk to us about what that what that setting is like. It has to be almost uh, surreal at this point to walk into the into the Capitol building uh, under these circumstances. Paint a paint a picture of that of what that looked and felt like going back to to Washington these days. Well, um, a big shout out to my wife Amy Kate for letting me borrow the minivan. Uh, but I have never before uh, <laughs> wanted more traffic. Uh, it was it was nonstop all the way there, and it was just uh, you know you want more traffic on the way into Washington. So uh, the the uh, I probably saw less than a third of the traffic I usually see. Um, when you're house floor, rather than sitting, we, we we they asked us to stay in our offices, which are in the house office buildings to the south of the Capitol dome. And uh, when we go there, of course they ask you to keep your distance. Um, a lot of people were wearing masks. I, I did a, a testimony before the Small Business Administration. Um, so that's testimonial that's on my uh, Facebook site if you want to see that. Um, again, you know, they're wiping down microphones and, and lots of gloves mm -hmm. and personal equipment. We lined up single file. We voted in waves by alphabetic. Uh, it's nice to be have a last name starting with B. You get to vote earlier. There were two votes that day. And uh, that's all that's all there were. I mean, I came in the night before and uh, voted the next day. Um, one was on oversight. Uh, it was actually a, not just duplicative, but a 
triplicate uh, oversight that Nancy Pelosi was asking for. Um, look, there's plenty of oversight already there. The second was the replenishing of the PPP. I did, was fully, fully supportive of that. And uh, we walk in single file, we vote, and then they we go out by another way. So quite surreal. And um, uh, we look forward to getting back there and, and doing the people's business on a more regular basis. Yeah, do, do the job you signed up for, right? But, but I mean, this is the job we need you for right now as well. It's changed, but it's no less critical. This is the... This is the oath to defend our country. It's not an oath of convenience. It's not an oath of, you know, lifestyle or, or, or whatever. This is an oath to uh, to protect our country and defend our constitution. Um, so uh, it, it's an honor to do that. You, you you know that these times may come. I imagine those that were sworn in in early 2000, uh, 2001, which would have been when Congress was sworn in, did they know that only a few months later they'd be facing 9-11? This is different than this is different than anything I've ever read before, except maybe the 1918 pandemic. Um, but, right. you know, we do what we have to do. So far, there's there's partisan bickering, yes. But at the same time, we have a, a very unified job to do to get our country reopened and open safely. Very good. We can't uh, thank you enough for being willing to, to do that for us and, and be willing to come on and being able to, to listen to um, what the needs of the of your district are, and and we appreciate that. I I am looking in our group chat right now. I know you can't see it, Congressman Bud. I don't see any questions uh, from our group here. If anybody's got any, we'll just do going once, going twice. Um, I don't see anything popping up, and I know that we had booked you, your your booking agency there at, at uh, Congressman Bud's uh, uh, booking agency only booked you through uh, three thirty. So. Uh, we promise to let you let you get off at around 3:30. Not seeing any additional questions, uh, we will again thank you for your service and thank you for being willing to to be on with us. Well, for those on the call, I'm just going to give out the number again. I'm at 336-9-1313, and uh, also bud.house.gov. Please reach out, and, and this could be COVID-19 related or it could be anything else. It could be uh, tax questions. In your interface with the federal government, we'd love to help. Even if it ends up being a state question, we can point you in the right direction. And uh, we have, we're here for constituent services. We've been doing much, much more of that work because people are focused on that right now. We're, we've always been here and people are um, uh, realizing it even more as uh, that we're in these unique times. So thank you. I'm glad to be able to support you all through the letter to the treasurer and uh, uh, with supporting C6s. And I uh, look forward to seeing you in person when we can have a real handshake. And I will, I will say, uh, a lot of the times when you call your your office, you get uh, you get a, a fine gentleman by the name of Kyle Bridges. Kyle does a great job for you. We're appreciative of everything he does uh, for us as well. So um, tell him hello, and uh, you all get back to work. I sure will. I appreciate your time. Thank you, Brent. Thank you, Congressman. We appreciate it. Take care. All right. As we say goodbye to, to Congressman Bud, let's uh, let's look forward to next week. Uh, as Congressman Bud said, uh, we uh, we're looking forward to perhaps having the state uh, get open again at five o'clock on May eighth. Of course, the governor's talked an awful lot about that opening happening in phases based on the data that we're seeing in terms of uh, COVID uh, nineteen cases, uh, testing, that sort of thing, and so. Um, I, I think we're still looking towards that March, or I'm sorry, that May 8, 5 o'clock. Um, we will continue these calls. Uh, Monday is Motivation Monday. We're actually having a leadership Greensboro takeover of our Motivation Monday. So uh, tune in for that. You'll want to hear from the folks who are in the current class uh, for Leadership Greensboro and everything that's going on with them. Uh, I think that'll be a great opportunity to hear about some wonderful community involvement with, uh, with leaders of Greensboro. Uh, on Tuesday, um, it is uh, Cinco de Mayo. It is Taco Tuesday. It is when the calendar came out, everybody thought, oh my gosh, um, Taco Tuesday is also Cinco de Mayo or vice versa. Won't this be great? And so um, our friend Cecilia Thompson's gonna, gonna do some work to get us prepared for Cinco de Mayo, perhaps some recipes and that sort of thing. She's really good at that. So 
pay attention to that as well. Um, and then Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, we are working on content on these calls to get our businesses ready to open. Uh, there's an awful lot to be done to prepare. Um, we had a great call yesterday um, talking about um, how you sanitize your workplace, masks, uh, different types of employees, and what kind of protection you're going to need to offer, uh, that sort of thing. We want to, on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, really focus in on the, the nuts and bolts of reopening uh, during this COVID-19 pandemic. And so be on the lookout for those topics. You will not want to miss those. Um, we, we may get into how you sanitize. Uh, we may have some folks on from the janitorial service sector to help us through that. Uh, um, because I can tell you, my wife would probably tell you, I'm probably not the best at cleaning up after myself, but doggone it, I'm going to have to learn here real fast. Um, uh, because it's going to be a requirement, not just to take care of me, but to take care of everybody around me. I and mean, ultimately, we're responsible for our own health, but now we're also responsible for the health of those around us as well. And so that's a pretty strong responsibility uh, that everybody will have to take in, into account and take seriously. And we want to make sure you've got the tools to do that. So um, again, a good lineup next week, uh, Monday through Friday, of these calls, three o'clock as we normally do. Um, enjoy the rest of your Friday. Enjoy a wonderful weekend. Uh, and we'll talk to everybody again on Motivation Monday, 3 o'clock on Monday. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Take care.